NES Tetris crashes at high levels. The basic mechanism causing the crash is that the scoring code spends so much time calculating points that things break down. The explanation I used to give was simply that the scoring took more than a frame and this in itself would crash the game. This is not the case, let's take a closer look. First, let's show why the score takes so long to calculate. NES Tetris does math like a second grader learning multiplication for the first time. To calculate the score for a single at level 155, it takes the score for a single at level 0 and adds it to your total 156 times. Not only is it doing long multiplication, but it's at the same time trying to do the math in base 10. The processor natively runs in hexadecimal, so this means checking every step of the way manually if you have to carry a 10 into the next digit. Finally, in the native game, every time the score goes over a max out, the game rewrites a max out back into the score. This is not just once at the end, this is per time it adds a number on. Of course, you wouldn't actually know that this math would take so long, we generally assume processors are very fast. But there is a finite amount of time, and that level that I mentioned, 155, is the first point where the game is known to crash. But let's look at why that time limit matters. To explain this, I'm going to have to give a quick primer on how code runs on the NES. The NES is like two people in a classroom. One's an artist, and the other is a mathematician. The mathematician has a textbook which contains all the code and data that they need to run the game, and a whiteboard to do any working out on. They're able to remember in their head three numbers, eight yes or no flags, and where in the book they are, but anything more than that has to be written down on the board. The mathematician is the processor, the book is the ROM, and the board is the RAM. The artist is the PPU, which is short for Picture Processing Unit. They're responsible for making the image that gets drawn to the screen, and have to exactly match pace with the scan beam of the television. They don't do much calculation and instead rely on a part of the whiteboard that the processor writes note onto to signal what needs to be drawn. However, whenever the processor wants to write onto that board, the artist can't see it because they're standing in the way. So the only time that the processor can safely change anything is when the artist isn't drawing. This means that every time the artist finishes drawing a frame, it yells at the processor to change anything it needs to. This is called V-blank because it's when the TV's scanning beam is moving vertically back to the top of the screen. Nothing needs to be drawn when it's doing that. The processor only has about a millisecond of real time to do this, but it's enough to get a decent amount done as long as things are started on time. With that in mind, here's what happens when the game crashes. NES Tetris is programmed in a way where there's a sort of code hub from which it jumps into specific routines that deal with different parts of the game, like scoring or controlling a piece or waiting for you to press start on the title screen. This is achieved by having the processor look at the current game state it has written on the board and referencing that with a lookup table to figure out which page in the book it needs to turn to and read instructions from. Because it can't hold much in its head, it ends up writing down the book page on the board as it works it out. It puts this figuratively at the top left of the whiteboard where it tends to write down most of what it needs only temporarily. As it finishes writing out the correct page, suddenly the artist tells them it's time to update the graphics. This would never happen normally, but the processor had spent so much time earlier doing the math for scoring that it ran out of time in the frame to do everything else it was supposed to. The processor, knowing that this is the only chance it's going to get, it quickly writes down everything in its head so it could come back and remember what it was doing when it's done doing the graphics. But here's the oversight. It doesn't do anything to protect that top left slot of the whiteboard it was doing its work in. So when it has to write some things down for calculation during the graphics updates, it accidentally writes over where it had that page of code it was supposed to run next. When it's done, it looks at all the things it saved and puts them back in its head and proceeds to read out the place where it's supposed to start executing code from. Which is weirdly telling it to execute code from the whiteboard instead of from ROM. Something I haven't mentioned yet is that code and data are not distinct in the NES. All are written purely in bytes, so you can just as easily read data as code and code as data, although the results usually are not good. In this case, reading out RAM as code is very bad. What usually happens is that the processor runs into a stop op code. These ones tell the program to, well, stop. And so what we see is the game crashes, it, it stops running code. And being that most bytes that end in 2 are considered a stop opcode, it is fairly common for some random byte that happens to be in RAM to just kill the game. Particularly the bytes at 4.1 and E7 usually kill the game because they tend to be left as 0.2 and F2. Interestingly, if we set up RAM very carefully 
we can actually tell the processor to run code that we specify ourselves, also known as arbitrary code execution, but this is a story for another time.